everybody. Welcome to the Care National uh, HEDIS TV broadcast. Happy to report that most of us have almost completely recovered from HEDIS. Um, I thought what we would do was recap um, some of the lessons learned from the HEDIS project. Um, I think that we all believed really strongly that the changes in CBP would cause um, a huge rate increase. I didn't see that huge rate increase. Um, I did see the actual abstraction being easier on my staff, um, but not necessarily the most compliant blood pressures. Um, so I think lessons learned there is that even though um, sometimes we anticipate um, something doing a, a big jump in the rates for health plans, um, that it not necessarily results in the jump in the rates, um, but it definitely did result in a very faster uh, production for my staff that worked the CBP measure. Um, again, um, we can't force people to take their meds or to do the things that they need to do to get their blood pressure under control. Uh, so that was very interesting for me. Um, it was, uh, again, the, the staff was very grateful. Um, they did not have to confirm the diagnosis of hypertension. So when the member got pulled into the measure, they had had two confirmed visits with the diagnosis of hypertension. So the only thing the abstraction staff had to do was to abstract the last office visit of the measurement year, um, that blood pressure reading. So we had one shot at it and um, did not see that huge jump in rates that we anticipated. Uh, the other thing I thought would be really interesting to go ahead and discuss is some of the proposed changes that we see that the NCQA has opened up um, for dialogue. So I see in the COA measure, care for older adults, that we may be getting rid of the functional status assessment. Um, that was, I think, the fourth bullet point in the specs, if I remember correctly. Um, and I think that that would be kind of um, exciting for some people. The functional status assessment, there were a bunch of different ways that you could pull those compliant components out of the medical record, um, IADLs or ADLs, um, or different um, documentation in the provider's uh, uh, comments, um, looking at removing the FSA from the COA measure, which would be really great for people. Um, I think that the next one was in the cervical cancer screening. Um, they added the primary HPV testing um, every five years, and that was for women 32 to 64. Um, and that would be, I think, a welcome change. Um, again, these are proposed changes. They, they haven't gone into effect yet, but something that you can go on to the NCQA's website um, and read some of these um, and, and you know ascertain for yourself if you think that this is going to make a big difference in your production as an abstractor or a big difference in your rates um, if you work for a health plan. The other proposed change was in the PPC measure, the pregnancy and postpartum. Um, the difference here was in the postpartum um, uh, numerator, there were early visits um, proposed to be added as well as late visits um, outside of that normal date range that we're used to looking at. Um, looking at my notes, it looks like the early visit would be 10 to 21 days. Um, which we all know usually is for that C-section mom. Um, so where we missed on the postpartum compliance was when the mom that had given birth via C-section would go for her PP visit a little bit earlier um, than the mom that didn't have the C-section. Uh, let's see, there was the later visit uh, as one of the other proposed changes, which was 22 to 84 days um, after the live birth. 
And then they are also proposing an early and late combo. Um, so this would again probably fall for um, our C-section moms. Um, they go in early because it's really a post-operative check and then they go in a little bit later where they meet the, the um, all of the numerators for the postpartum office visit. So I don't know about you all, but I was um, really, really exhausted all the way through HEDIS. Um, it was a challenge as always, um, but it was an, a very uh, fulfilling. Um, we, we did wonderfully, the staff did wonderfully. Um, training development was great, um, learning new aspects of, of testing, um, looking at all the different components of adult learning. Um, and on that note, um, just to let you know, uh, we're very excited that we are going to be offering um, the HEDA certified training course again um, in partnership with myself in Care National. And we are looking at launching that in August. So that is a wonderful way for people that have a, a good solid background um, in, in the medical field that are interested in gaining knowledge in what is HEDIS and how do you abstract HEDIS. So it is the applied knowledge as well as the technical specifications for each one of the measures. So I do believe that um, my, my cohort, RJ, will be sending out an email to everybody who has registered for information about the HEDA certified course. Um, and it will give you the dates, um, how to register, uh, what the cost is for the course, and all of the benefits to you. Um, I will tell you that uh, last year in completing the HEDIS training, we had a phenomenal group of people that took the course um, and we also had some um, extraordinarily positive feedback um, from people. So it is a combination of that wonderful adult learning method where you learn the specifications for each one of the measures and then we also go really deep into the abstraction requirements for each one of the measures. And at the end, <clears throat> you, uh, you receive a, a quiz or a test um, to see how you did. And then, of course, you're awarded um, a certification um, from Care National um, in passing your HEDA certified course. So look for that information. Um, feel free to, to reach out um, to anybody at Care National, um, myself included, and we would be more than glad uh, to give you as much information as possible. So everybody that survived HEDIS, um, congratulations. Um, anybody who has uh, some of the um, kind of um, almost like a hangover still, even though it's already July, um, I feel for you um, working a supplemental data project right now, which is kind of a nice break, but at the same time is, is still um, kind of carrying over that, that heat is tired into um, different components of, of work. So congratulations on surviving HEDIS. I hope that you did a great job as an abstractor or you did a great job with your rates as a health plan. And if this is something that you are interested in as far as you would like to transition into um, HEDIS work and you have a strong background in healthcare, then look for information about our new upcoming HEDIS certified training course. I hope everybody has a great day and look forward to talking to you again.